Good evening, folks. This is Diamond from the Oppenheimer Ranch Project. On Tuesday, October 31st, Halloween at 9.55 p.m. Mountain Time, 2017. We're not trick-or-treating tonight. This is a Grand Solar Minimum Update. What you're looking at is the USGS map. For the last 24 hours, magnitude 2.5 US. We had another large earthquake in New Caledonia. Um, uh, and I've had several videos on this topic. With galactic cosmic rays increasing, this is predicted. Numbers of large earthquakes popping off and volcanism increasing. This is the bubble muon hypothesis. This could be magma moving in the subsurface. Lots of volcanoes in this area. Look at the number of large quakes all above five magnitude. Also, there is a similar cluster over, this is in the Fiji Islands, New Caledonia. There's a similar cluster here in Indonesia. This all popping off in the last 24 hours. Also, if you go to all magnitude US one day, you'll notice that in all of the volcanic hot spots, Mount Rainier, Mount St. Helens, there is activity, boom, boom, in the Long Valley Caldera area, boom. That is part of the uh, galactic cosmic ray increase, activating the magma in the subsurface. It also has to do with the fact that we've been in a very low planetary K index. Look at how long we've been in zero in the last two days. We just came off an 18 hour low and the lithosphere flexed, boom, and we had a 6.6 .6 in New Caledonia. That's what we're seeing there. In solar minimum, the sun is quiet. The shields on the planet wane because there's no activity to prevent, to protect from. The K can go as low as zero. Seismic activity increases. Come over to the seismic report, 84 total quakes today at Volcano Discovery, an increase of uh, over 20 quakes from yesterday because the K had stayed in zero so long. And we've got 14, 15, 16, 17 quakes over five magnitude in the last 24 hours. I'll leave you links. Volcanic activity is also up today. More than it was before I made the video earlier today. Shivaluch eruption. Sakurajima erupted. Swanos exploded. Cinnabung erupted. There are volcanic ash advisories for Ducono Fuego. Tirialba. Poas. Reventador. Sabancaya. All happening because of cosmic ray increase. Let's move on to the cosmic rays. More flooding. Southern India faces serious flood threats as 400 millimeters of rain expected into the weekend. The northeast monsoon is getting off to a fast start as flooding is already engulfing locations in southern India. Talk about crop loss. Florida, Florida fruit and veggie prices are up, up and away for the holidays. This has to do with uh, Hurricane Irma. There will be fewer Florida vegetables at the Thanksgiving table and expect poinsettias to cost a little bit more. You can read about it here. Surface ozone is damaging the wheat and rice crops across the country, study says. So this increased pollution is reducing yields. Not good moving into the grand solar minimums because weather will help us reduce yields. Nate flooding in Costa Rica, 106,000 hectares of crops and farmers clamor for government aid. You can read about that. Let's talk about the cold, snowfall knocking out power, Traverse City. This is in Michigan. Here's the forecast for today where I live in Colorado. We have snow throughout the entire area. Uh, red is 10 to 15 inches down here in the southwest. We have winter weather alerts for Montana. Here's the snow forecast for tonight. A winter storm warning has been issued for elevations above 5,000 feet. A winter weather advisory is in effect for elevations below 5,000. Heavy snow is expected in the next 24 hours. Additional snow will fall later this week. Heavy snow predicted. A cold front will move south out of Canada on Tuesday night, opening the door to much colder air to move down into Montana. I'll leave you links. Here's the snowpack for the U.S. 
This is moving into early November, folks. This is a lot of snow down into Texas, New Mexico, West Virginia. So in the Grand Solar Minimum, the climate is all over the map. It is cold. It's wet. There's flooding. The crop losses caused from swings in temperature. October is one of the driest happening in New Zealand currently. I'll leave you links to that. Extreme weather losses, folks. Let's talk about it. 129 billion. This is the climate report. Now, is this going to be the cam the straw that breaks the camel's back? This is coming out of fizz.org. 129 billion in extreme weather losses last year. Two 200 billion this year. 500 billion the next year. Global financial collapse. And now the mainstream is covering their ass. This is coming from Newsweek because the global warming scam is not going to pan out and it's going to quickly be very difficult to hide the truth. They want to hide it in an eruption, certainly. Giant eruption at Bali Volcano could unleash global cooling at scale unseen for decades. I'll leave you links to this. This is how they're going to cover their ass. This one coming out of inverse.com, future volcanic eruptions will sc screw with climate change more than before. Isn't this crazy? It's like we live in the bizarro world. We're in solar minimum. The sun is dead. The magnetic field of the earth is weak. Cosmic rays are infiltrating. And if we can get that, if we go down to K is zero, look out. Seismic activity will increase. We will see increased volcanism worldwide moving forward, and it's starting, and we're documenting it. Guys, if you have any questions, leave it in the comments. There were 84 major earthquakes above magnitude 5 today because the K is at zero. Thankfully, the sun is going to, we're waiting for a coronal hole stream from the southern coronal hole. It's going to hit us at any moment. Uh, I see the phi index switching real quick here. Give you a little space weather uh, lesson. If we can check the solar wind, we can make a what we're waiting for. Here is the speed to start to increase, and it is. So the coronal hole is going to be coming. We'll have some geomagnetic activity coming back to the Earth. Probably tomorrow we'll be going to geomagnetic storm. I'll do a video on it. Um, be safe.